Hey, I'm Joel. This is a video tutorial on how to make a Reese style bass in Roland's Xenology Pro software synth. This is an example of what it sounds like. I've got some 808 drums and some techno drums here for some contrast. Let's have a listen. If you're curious, these drums are also coming from Xenology Pro, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's dive in. I've got it sidechained to the drums, but you won't really hear that too much. Okay, so if we just click the name here um, and make sure user is selected on the left and all on the right, we'll have our user custom presets here. So let's just select initial tone. This is what it sounds like. Beautiful playing there. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go menu here and voice limit. Make sure this is on light. So the voice limit here is like CPU usage reduction. Um, if it's on heavy, it will heavily reduce the voices coming out of Xenology Pro. But uh, definitely have it on light here because you're going to, if you're going to have something in your mix that's got a lot of voices and um, it's quite thick and warm, you obviously you want that to be your bass. So put that on light and we'll turn on mono as well. So only one note can be played at a time. All right, so in partial one here, we're gonna select oscillator and in the wave bank here, we're gonna click the name and on the right hand side, make sure synth bass is selected and we're gonna go down to SH101 bass there. You can choose any of these really. This is what it sounds like by itself. These ones are quite nice as well, but let's go with the SH101. So once we got that selected there, We'll go to the filter and we're going to turn it to a Moog filter, which is really nice and warm. We're going to bring the cutoff down a little bit. Um, it doesn't really matter too much where it is at this stage, but we'll just sort of listen and we can always come back and fine tune it. But maybe around the 300 area here. And we're going to turn the cutoff to 24 decibels. So it's a much sharper cutoff. Let's bring that cutoff up a little bit. All right, that's nice there. We're going to go into pitch and we're going to change the fine tuning of uh, partial one here just a little bit. It won't really sound too much different now, but when it's got the second oscillator in shortly, we'll be able to, it just adds like a little bit more warmth and detuning. Speaking of detuning, let's put on unison. So it just adds extra voices and we have the unit unison control on the right here. So unison uh, size at about four or five, let's go with five and we can adjust the detune to taste. So we can hear it gives us that sort of width, so without the unison. I'm just gonna go into oscillator here and turn the wave gain up. Just be careful with this, because it uh, for every six decibels there, which is one step uh, at a time here, it doubles the volume. There you go, that's a bit better. So now let's turn unison back on. And see that's peaking now, so let's turn that wave gain down again. So again, play around with the unison detune. You can hear it gives us that really nice, warm, atmospheric sound. So without it, with it. Nice, you can play around with these to taste, but that sounds pretty good for now. So that's partial one finished there. Now we're gonna to go to partial two. So we're gonna turn it on. We're just gonna solo partial two. So just have that one on, turn partial one off. We're gonna to go to virtual analog. We're gonna select a modified sine wave here, which is this one here. And then when we change the pulse width, we can see and hear what that's doing to the sound. So just by default, it sounds like this. Let's change the pulse width a bit. And the fat control here, basically what that does is it uh, attenuates the lower frequencies of the, of the waveform. We can hear that that's um, popping and clicking at the start there. So for that, to solve that, we're going to go to amp slash EQ here and just add a tiny little bit of attack on that one. And a tiny bit of release as well, just a little bit. Nice. So now we'll go to filter again and on oscillator uh, partial two, sorry, we're going to change it to the Moog again, 24 decibel cutoff. 
bring it down to around the same position as this one here. So listening to the two partials together. And now when we're here, if we bring the cutoff, the master cutoff up or down, that'll, that'll uh, at 12 o'clock will be at the position each partial's filter is set. And when we turn it down, it's gonna turn the filters down. We won't get a visual representation of that, but we can hear it. And if we open the filter, the master filter, it's gonna open both filters together as well. Awesome, so a really nice thick bass. We, we can also have a bit more fun with partial two here. We can actually change the pitch if we want. So we can change it up an octave, 12 semitones. Or we could change it two, uh, two octaves, 24 semitones. But I think that's a little bit too prominent. So we can turn that down back to 12 semitones or, or one octave. So just listening to partial two and just listening to partial one. Together. Nice. Uh, we also could add um, portamento here because without the portamento you hear as soon as the second note starts it immediately cuts off the other one. But if we add portamento on here it'll add a little bit of glide between the notes so it'll slide from one to the other. We can check, play around with the time if we want. That's purely to taste there. Just a little bit I feel goes a long way. And if we want to add analog feel, I'm just going to turn the master cutoff up here. If we add some analog feel, it sort of gives us a slight detune sound. Like an old analog synthesizer. All right, let's bring that master cutoff back down just to 12 o'clock. I think um, I'm going to turn both of these filter cutoffs just up just a little bit so that when the master's at 12, we've got a bit more brightness in it. Subtle, but there you go. Now, the next thing we want to do is add some drive or distortion or some saturation. So we can do that in any drive or, or distortion plugin, but we'll use the master effects in Xenology Pro here. So when we click MFX, down, it opens up this little window down the bottom. So we'll click where it says through here. You can add any overdrive or distortion, but let's just add this warm saturator. It's kind of kind of subtle at the lower um, end of the drive, but pretty intense at the high end. And if we're thinking that the overall volume isn't loud enough, we can turn the master volume up here. Yeah, that's sounding pretty fat. We can play around with a bunch of different controls here. Um, I haven't done too much investigating with this here, but let's just use the drive for now. And then when we change the master cutoff, Awesome. So that's sounding pretty thick there. That's pretty much it done. I'm just going to turn the master effects off and then change the zoom again here. And then we can go into the matrix control section. Um, I'm going to do a video on this one shortly. But the matrix control here allows us to have one parameter that controls other parameters. So let's go uh, click this um, drop down box here, go down to this bottom section and we'll have LFO1. And we'll tell LFO1 to control the master cutoff. So when I bring this amount up, it's going to apply the LFO to the cutoff based on the LFO on LFO1. So we'll see here, if we hit tempo sync, uh, I have it on a quarter note. So it's, there's four quarter notes in every bar. So one, two, three, four, quarter being four, uh, quarter being one of four. So now when we play that, the LFO1 is going to control the master cutoff based on a quarter note. But it's only happening to partial one. So what we can do is if we go range control here on partial two, have the same control LFO1 to control the cutoff there again. And we can, we can compare the two by just clicking up here and you can see the controls changing down the bottom. We've got to make sure we go back into LFO and change the tempo sync on partial two. 
So now those, both of the filter frequencies on each partial will be controlled by the independent LFO, which will be at the same speed um, by the amount down here on each matrix control. But it's a little bit too much. So we're just going to have that really, really subtle. And now if we go to the LFOs here and we change the rate, so let's have it at one bar for each of them. So it just adds that nice like modulation sort of up and down feeling. Let's leave it on, let's go, let's go on a half. So it's a half a bar modulation. If we want, we can change the LFO type. By default, it goes to a triangle wave. So let's change it to a sine wave to give it a bit more sort of wobble. And also what we can do is if we want, we can have that LFO one control a bunch of different things up to four at a time. So we can have it controlling the master level, for instance. And you can do some really cool stuff. You can, you can either just go in and, and to the second partial and add the same uh, controls and settings here. So they're both doing the same thing, or you could have them doing different things. So we could have partial twos, LFO one, controlling the cutoff. And so let's say we have a controlling the pitch. So the partial twos LFO is going to control the cutoff and the pitch, whereas partial one's LFO is going to control the cutoff and the, the level, so the, the volume. So if we just solo partial two here, so it becomes a little vibrato if we add them both together again. There you go, that's sounding pretty fat. So listening to that now with the drums. So there you go. That's how to make a re-space sound in Roland's Xenology Pro software synth. Thanks for watching.